Welcome back to Viewpoint. On social media today, I asked all y'all if anything you heard of the Bush ceremony changed your opinion of W. On Facebook, Kelly Harris Anderson wrote, Most say he deserves prison, but for a dumb bleep like him, isn't a library like a prison? Kelly, I'm sorry you really didn't answer the question, and we had to clean up your vulgarity just a bit. But it was too funny to not repeat. My guess is that Bush will spend as little time in his own library as he did in his own presidency. If you have a comment for the show, tweet us at Viewpoint. Point CTV. I'm laughing at my joke so much I feel like Ture. Uh, or <laughs> at John Fiegel saying, or use the hashtag viewpoint, I love Ture. Or post it on our Facebook page. All right, we've talked about the legacy of President George W. Bush. Now let us talk about the comedy of George W. Bush. And there are no two people I'd rather talk about this than my two guest panel, legendary comedian and founder of the Nationwide Animal Rescue Organization, Tales of Joy, Elaine Boozler, and writer and comedian and TV's Frank, Frank Conniff. <laughs> okay. So Welcome. nice to see you again. It's lovely to have you back. <laughs> all right, first of all, I want to talk about this attempt to rewrite history of the Bush years. His poll numbers are, of course, higher now than when he left office. That's not unique. Mm -hmm. So is it working? Will people forget what a terrible, wretched, bad, ineffective failure president he was? Elaine? Wow. Oh, me? Yeah. Uh, people forget everything. The Kardashians have a hit show. You know, you can't fool 47% of the people 47% of the time. I just want to say one thing. If George Bush has a library, it is time to let Pete Rose back into baseball. Right? Yeah. Oh, exactly. Please. Thank you. But it's hey, true. OJ could get out of prison and get a reality dating show to find uh -huh. love at this point. Frank, what do you think? I think that uh, the history is he should have a writing class for rewriting. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, Ernest Hemingway didn't do as much rewriting. Is, is going on with the uh, Bush presidency right now. Yeah, and the edits as well. I mean, the word Iraq was never mentioned today. Mm -hmm. Afghanistan wasn't mentioned. Surplus, tax cuts, uh, Mission Rumsfeld. Mission or accomplished. Neither. Well, it really is the Dick Cheney library. It's just nice that they're giving it a, a pseudonym. Mm -hmm. Well, know, I think should... if he's fair, at least half of it should be called the Al Gore Presidential Library. Bing! We can they still say his Chad. name around here. Yeah, <laughs> they have Chads they have, on the exhibit. One of the exhibits is a box of Chads. Do they really? They do, but there, no one knows how many because Rove still won't let anyone count them. <laughs> right, and the ballot boxes are still washing up on the Gulf Coast shore. <laughs> sure. uh, let's look at a few clips from today's ceremony. Let, shall we do this? I wanted to do this with you guys all day. Yes. President Bush gave a speech in which, I, I, again, he didn't mention Iraq or Afghanistan, but he did repeat one word over and over. Take a look. Freedom. 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 Awesome. Is this a psychological wow. trick? If he repeats the word enough, is I'm, it all history will remember? I'm thinking that freedom must be his safe word. <laughs> it worked with 9-11. It's how he got us to go to war. He uh, said 9-11 a thousand times in every speech. And if you do repeat the lie often enough, it becomes the truth. Well, and I think, country. I, I got to say, I do think the greatest lie we were told on 9-11 mm. that the media repeated for years was that we were attacked because of our freedom. That's not what bin Laden <laughs> right. said. Yeah. He told us why he did it. It had nothing to do with our right. freedom. Right. They it's liked just... our shoes. They were so cute. If he didn't like freedom, he would have gone after after Amsterdam first, I think. Freedom's but, just another word for, man, did I screw up as president. <laughs> well, at one point in the speech, Bush specifically thanked Vice President Cheney for his service and then added this. History's gonna show that I served with great people, a talented, dedicated, intelligent men, a team of men and women who love our nation as much as I do. He seemed to stumble a bit over his few words there. Do you think he was having trouble choking back the complete crap he was saying? I uh, noticed, you know, that Cheney wasn't there until I looked closer and saw that Bush was actually sitting on Cheney's lap. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I, I guess it was Cheney who was trying to drink a glass of water at the same time he was making that speech. Mm -hmm. I think history will remember it as he said, if it's an alternative history written by Philip K. Dick <laughs> in a sci-fi novel that'll be on the Sci-Fi Channel eventually. It was very interesting that Dr. Dr. Rice showed up. She's really the one person from that whole administration that still mm -hmm. gets invited to these things, the GOP convention. When I saw Condoleezza Rice on, on TV this morning, I was just, I said to myself, I hope I do a better job at work today than she did at her job. Uh, as National Security yeah, Advisor? She, yeah. Let's not forget, 9-11 happened and Bill Maher lost his job, but she got bumped yeah, up. Right. right. When I saw the five presidents lined up today, I just could think, it looks like the SAT sample question. <laughs> <laughs> Although this time Jimmy Carter was standing with them. He, he didn't seem to be right, able exactly. to alien. They, they were all so old, it almost looked like a reunion of the Eagles. <laughs> <laughs> Although Jimmy Carter wins the fashion award for having the same shades as Morpheus from The Matrix. Uh, Bush also broke up a little at the end of his speech. Take a look. Whatever challenges come before us, I will always believe our nation's best days lie ahead. 
God bless. I got to say, I thought that was the most sincere moment of the speech. I do think this man knows his place in history. I think he knows how much he's loathed, yeah. and I think he does genuinely feel bad, and that's why he's so estranged from Cheney now, Frank. That, that moment uh, is the one time I really agreed with him that, that our best history is in, ahead of us, because he's not going to be president anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, you know, it's, it's fun to be glib, and of course, there's a lot to make fun of, and, but what he's done to this country is unforgivable, and, you know, the gift shop sells mm -hmm. just one thing. It's the deficit, and it's the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> We are, it's his war deficit, and this is what put us in mm -hmm. hell. And, uh, but do you think there's real pain on his part? Do you think he knows? No, I don't think he knows. I don't think he runs that deep. I think I, he's a simple, nice guy who, uh, I think the reason Cheney doesn't show up at these things, he doesn't need Bush anymore. No, he's an artist I'm now. Not, Maybe he's I'm more sensitive. I'm not sure than I agree with, with that. I mean, yeah. I think publicly he's always going to say, you know, I, I, I didn't do anything wrong or I, I take nothing back. But, but in his private moments sitting there painting his bathroom, you know, <laughs> I, I just think in his head he, he really thought that, that, that he was going to be this great wartime president. And when he went to Iraq, there was such arrogance and such assurance yeah. on their part. He, said, he told Bob Woodward, I, Bob Woodward asked him, did you uh, ask your father for advice? He said, I asked the Heavenly Father for advice. He literally thought... God told him to go into war. That is historic fact. Yeah, no, he thought if, God told I, him. If God wanted Saddam Hussein and yeah. 100,000 Iraqis dead, he'd have smited him himself. So uh, I, I can't imagine what he, you know, what he must be thinking now. Well, I want to run this because President Obama had some very kind things to say about President Bush. What President Clinton said is absolutely true. To know the man is to like the man. Because he's comfortable in his own skin. He knows who he is. He doesn't put on any pretenses. He takes his job seriously, but he doesn't take himself too seriously. He is a good man. You ever have someone you don't like all that much ask you to give them a job reference? <laughs> wow. Is you know, that what that sounded like? If I lost a son or a daughter in Iraq or Afghanistan, I don't think he's a good man. And I think what we did to those countries is unforgivable. Indeed. And I think it will rain down on us in spades, you know, a lot more than preventing terrorism here. And it's, it's unforgivable. And I don't think they can leave the country without getting prosecuted. I, and I think you're right. I think they should be. I mean, Frank, when you consider the best thing you can say about the president's legacy is his personality is positive. He's yeah. He's comfortable in his own skin, which kind of hurts because of all of the physical injuries that people experienced who went into this phony war that he started. Yeah, you know, the fact I, that he's comfortable with himself is not something that makes me, that endears him to me. And that's why I don't think there's introspection there or any kind of regret. I just if, don't think he runs that if deep. Bush, if Bush said, the thing about George Bush is he hates himself, then I would, I would that would make more sense to me. <laughs> then Indeed. There's, yeah, some depth to look back at what you've done. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, I mean, it's like I invited you guys here to be funny, but you're two of the smartest people <laughs> I know. It's so depressing. Well, and that's the fact, it's and that's the reality. Thing. It's and, a horrible and thing it's, that he it's did. It's great to make fun of him as a comedian. I miss him every day. Mm -hmm. But we run a great risk as a nation with a 47% approval of forgetting the toll of oh, blood man. and limbs. And when days you think like that, this are meant to make people forget. Indeed, no. when you consider how much money the guys who sell prosthetic limbs make to the mm -hmm. VA. Of course, and, mm -hmm. how much th and how much all his friends made and Cheney's friends made on the schools and hospitals that weren't built in Oh, we'll get to countries. that in a second because Frank and, and uh, Elaine will stay with me after the break and I'll have some positive things to say about George W. Bush's presidency eventually. That's next. <laughs>